Okay, so in this video, we will take some examples of equivalent fractions and also discover an important property of these equivalent fractions. So this question says that write the fractions and state if they are equivalent. Now, this is the first example that we are supposed to do. And what I would do is I would just straight away have a visual check at these four figures and I would have a look at the shaded portion. So what is clearly visible is that that in all these four figures half of the circle has been shaded. That is same for all the four figures. What is different is the number of paths into which the circle is divided. So that is a visual check. Now the visual check says that the fractions that we are going to represent for each of these cases are going to be equivalent. So that is what we decided on the basis of visual check. Now let us try to write down the fractions and mathematically say or mathematically prove that they are equivalent. So this, let's start with this fraction, the first one and uh, that this fraction can be represented as 1 by 2 that is one part out of two parts in this case we have two parts which are shaded and the total parts are 4 so we can write this as 2 by 4 in this case in the third figure we have 3 by 6 that is because we have a total of 6 parts out of which 3 parts have been shaded and in the fourth figure we have 4 parts which have been shaded out of total 8 parts. So we have this 4 by 8. Now do we see a pattern here? So let us say that we start with 1 by 2. Okay, And when I multiply this 1 by 2 by 2, that is we multiply the numerator and denominator by 2, we get the second fraction. So essentially can I say that the other fractions are obtained in the way so when I do this we get 2 by 4 so which is nothing but the second figure I'll just write this as the second figure now when I take the first fraction again and multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3 we get 3 by 6 which is nothing but the third figure and when I take up the first fraction and multiply it by 4 so 1 times 4 is 4 and 2 times 4 is 8 so this is the fourth figure so we can say mathematically also that these fractions are equivalent so visually as well as mathematically we have proved that the fractions are equal and just for your recollection we can achieve or we can get an equivalent fraction for a given fraction by just multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number so if we are able to prove that by multiplying this fraction okay or by multiplying this fraction by the same number that is the same uh, the numerator is divided by the same number numerator and denominator we get an equivalent fraction so that is how we prove now let us have a look at the second example now in this case we have small circles which have been made here and of course now here also we can do a visual check what i can do is i can just try to look at the circles which are shaded so in this figure, let's, let me just write down the figure numbers here. This is figure 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So in the fourth figure, we have just one bar shaded. Here we have 2, here we have 3. In this case, we have 4 and here in this case, we have 5 and 1, 6. So we have this. But <coughs> it won't be easy for us to straight away say whether all these are equivalent or not so you can try the visual method but it may not be accurate in this case so in this case we we'll write down the fractions and then see whether from the one of the fractions we can achieve the others or not so let us try start with this one so here we have four balls in a row and there are three rows so the total we have 12 rows out of which we are taking out four so this is four by twelve in this case we have total 9 out of which 3 have been taken out so this fraction will be represented as 3 by 9 in the third figure we have two circles taken out of total 6 so this fraction is 2 by 6 in the fourth we have one taken out of 
3 so this is 1 by 3 and in this case we have 6 taken out of how much 3 and to 5 and this is again 5 out of 15 now I just want to find out whether these are all equivalent or not so what we do is I would take a fraction for which there is no common factor and in that case there is no common factor and when I say no common factor it means that the numerator and denominator do not have a common factor so in this case it is this fraction 1 by 3 1 by 3 does not have any common factor other than 1 and now what we will try to do is we will try to multiply this 1 by 3 that is both the numerator and denominator in this fraction by the same number and see if we can achieve any of the fractions from 1 figures 1, 2, 3 and 5. So when I start here with 1 by 3 what happens when I multiply it by 2 do we get anything? So what we get is 1 by 2 is 2 and 3 by 2 is 6. Now 2 by 6 is what we get here in the figure 3. So 1 by 3 and 2 by 6 are equivalent fractions. Now let me again take 1 by 3 and now we will try to multiply it by 3. I am making a guess here because I know that this 3 here can when I multiply it by 1 I will get a 3. So when I do this 3 by 3 so we get the equivalent fraction as 3 by 9. Now 3 by 9 is the same as in figure 2. So this is also an equivalent fraction. Now we will continue. Now in this case we will multiply it by 4. The next term. So we have 4 by 12. So the 4 by 12 fraction is what we have in figure 1 and that is also equivalent to 1 by 3. Now we have 6 by 15. So what can I multiply by 1 by 3 to get a 6 on the top what I can do is I can 6 by 6 so what do we have here so uh, 1 by 6 is is 6 and 3 by 6 3 multiplied by 6 is 18 but this is 6 by 18 so is there a way that we can get 6 by 15 so we are not going to get it right so the only equivalent fractions are 1 by 3 2 by 6 3 by 9 and 4 by 12 and not 6 by 15. This is not an equivalent fraction. Now having said that let us see some more examples. Now this says that find the equivalent fraction for 2 by 5 with a numerator 6. So here is the problem that we have to solve. We know that there is a fraction 2 by 5 and I want to find out a fraction whose numerator is 6 but the denominator is something. We will just replace it with the box. Now we just learned earlier that we can obtain the equivalent fractions by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the same number. So in this case we know the numerator and we can figure out how what should I have multiplied by 2 to get this? So a quick check we can do is just to divide this, the equivalent fractions numerator, by the denominator. That is, I would just write it as 6 divided by 2 which gives us 3. So this 3 means that we have multiplied the 3 by 2 to get this 6. So because this is an equivalent fraction, so 5 must also be multiplied by 3. To get the box so 5 multiplied by 3 is 15 therefore the answer here is going to be 15 so 6 by 15 is the equivalent fraction that we are looking at now the other one is different in the terms that we have a known denominator that is we have to find an equivalent fraction of 15 by 35 with a denominator is 7 so we have something like this 15 35 is equal to 7 and what is unknown here is the numerator. Now in the earlier case we knew that we can multiply a fraction numerator and denominator 
to get an equivalent fraction. There is another method in which we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same number to get an equivalent fraction. Now in this case 35 has been divided by something to give us the number 7. Okay? So we, straight away we know that so what we can do is in order to find out what 35 has been divided by to give us 7. Right? So what we can do is we can divide 35 by 7. So what do we get is 5. Right? So we, we, we get 5 here which has been divided by 35. Sorry, I would be saying the other way around that is we have divided 35 by 5 to get 7. Okay, so similarly 15 also needs to be divided by 5. 15 needs to be divided by 5 which will give us 3 and therefore the answer here is going to be 3. Or the other way around you can also figure it out this way that 3 times 5 so let me just write it here 3 by 7 so 3 times 5 is 15 and 7 times 5 is 35 so this is also the same fraction that we have here so uh, this